What's up guys, I'm Cheyenne, I'll tell girl. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I have some spicy romances to share with you. I don't wanna go, cause your love is what I want, babe. We all love a good spicy romance, am I right? Uh, it's been a while since I've come out with the spicy romance rec video and I'm excited to share my list with you. Now I feel like in this list, I really did want to target books that are super, super spicy, but also have a really good plot to follow too. Um, typically I don't rate books that are just like strictly spice very high on like Goodreads and stuff. So I don't necessarily think those are great books to recommend to read, if that makes any sense. Like they're not good books to recommend if you're looking for great spice, but also a good plot to follow. So I tried to do that when I was picking out these books. So hopefully these work for you and um, you get some new recommendations. So let's go and get started. A lot of these books I have on my shelf, but I'm just going to like throw an image up on the screen. That way you can screenshot it. Um, I tend to like cover the names with my fingers and stuff like that when I'm holding it. So I want to make sure you guys can screenshot these pictures and, um, you know, get all the crazy like ones of me like that. I love when I used to watch on booktube, I would watch other people before I was even a booktuber and I would be screenshotting books and literally half the time the people in the pictures are like mid talk like this, triple chin like that. It's hilarious. We look really great in situations like this, but okay, I'm rambling. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first book I'm going to recommend is The Bittersweet Duet by QB Tyler. We are following Charlie and Charlie and her husband, they are going through some marital problems. Ones that have been happening for a while. They're finally deciding to seek marriage counseling. Okay marriage counseling. Now, the last thing that Charlie is expecting is to go to see her marriage counselor with her husband and to be like welcomed by the most beautiful man she's ever seen in her life. And this man is very forthcoming about his attraction to her. Makes it very clear by every gesture, every look, every turn, every every everything. He's completely infatuated by her and he makes it clear and she kind of feeds into that. So this is a romance between um, the marriage counselor and Charlie. And then while she's in the middle of trying to save her marriage or like attempting to save her marriage, um, juggling back and forth that so much angst, so much spice, so much like towing the line of this forbiddenness that really is not for the faint of heart. If you love a hero who is just straightforward and is like, I will do anything to have you and I will do anything to protect you and like screw my job, screw my responsibilities, screw your husband. Well, don't literally screw your husband. Come screw me. Um, this is the book for you. And then next we have Hush Hush by Lucia Franco. This is one of my all time favorite spicy forbidden taboo age gap romances. Um, we're following Aubrey and James and Aubrey has, she's a 21 year old who's really like trying to get through college. She has spent a lot of her time working like dead end jobs in order to support her grandmother who has pretty much raised her. And um, she's kind of tired of, you know, working three jobs to suffice as like one income. So her friend, that's also her roommate, ends up telling her like, hey, why don't you do what I'm doing? Like she's a high-end escort for Manhattan's elite and she makes bomb money. So Aubrey's like, you know what, what do I have to lose? Might as well try it. I feel like I can like turn my emotions off to be the escort that I need to be. And like, these are classy, rich men. Um, I'm sure they treat the women well. So she goes through this interview process, which let me just say this, if you've never read this book, Pay attention to the interview scene because it is a scene that lives literally rent free in my head forever, forever. That's what I'm going to say. So this book is following Aubrey and she is going on this new like career path search. She ends up meeting James and James is one of her clients. Now James is very forbidden for a lot of reasons that you will find out. Um, he is much, much, much older than her. I think like 30 years older than her. And um, he is a lot more than what meets the eye and a lot more than Aubrey can handle, okay? Um, it's hot, it is hot. But I feel like Lucia Franco gave you the right amount of angst to make the story feel like, are they even going to end up together? Is this gonna work? Can this work? And what can we do to make it work? She makes it so believable. So definitely, definitely check this one out. The next book we have is Gravity by Sarah Kate. This is one of my OG all time favorite Sarah Kate books. I know, and I'm just gonna say this, I think a lot of people don't like this book, but I'm 
normally an exception to those. Um, I freaking loved this book. So we are following Alistair, Nash, and Zara. And the reason I'm saying we have three of them is because Zara just recently lost her sister. And Nash, who's the other hero who's around Zara's age, just recently lost his brother. Now his brother and her sister were together and they had been together for forever. So therefore their families are kind of connected in that way. Now Alistair is the father. Now Alistair comes to Zara after his son's death and her sister's death and says, um, now my other son, Nash, he is really struggling since his brother died. I feel like he's just kind of like plummeted off the deep end. He has no idea who he is. He's no, no idea what purpose he has in his life. And I need you to help him stay on the right track because he's making terrible choices. So he's like, I will pay you $1 million if you come and stay on my private island for, I think it's like two months, two months, I'll pay you a million dollars and just help him stay on track and like get his life just like back on solid ground again. So that's what Zara does. She ends up being stuck on this island with Alistair and Nash. Now this is like a love triangle between a father and a son. Let me just tell you, Zara is not shy. She is not shy and Alistair is not shy. Some of my most favorite scenes are in some of these books y'all. So just buckle up for some hot and fun times. Um, she has to decide between like her feelings for Alistair, her feelings for Nash, and then also like her feelings to protect Nash because of how deeply he's struggling. And there's a lot more than just like the death of his brother that he's going through. But also like Zara kind of feels like, why would I be with the dad when like Nash has the same interest in me as well? And I'm having feelings for him, but why am I feeling this way about his father? So she is juggling these feelings and this is really her just like exploring, um, her relationship with both men. Hot, hot. The next book I'm going to share is Stitches by Sam Mariano. I feel like this is one of Sam Mariano's most like underrated romances, but I loved it. Loved it. We're following Sebastian and Mora and Sebastian and Mora are married. They have literally the most solid, healthy relationship that you would expect to find in a marriage. Um, they really do respect each other and see the best in each other and support each other and like all of their wants and needs. And you'll find out what I mean by that eventually. Um, they also have this best friend named Griff and Griff has just recently found out some stuff about his wife and they end up separating and he's just really struggling. It kind of like caught him off guard and he's like, I, I, I don't really know how to move on from here. He's hurting. He feels broken. And Sebastian loves his best friend. Like he's just like, dude, you're my best friend. I want nothing but happiness for you. Like I, because I love and care about you so much, I want you to like enjoy my wife a little bit. Okay, enjoy my wife a little bit. Um, she brings me happiness and she brings me like everything that I could ever want in like a marriage, but like feelings and comfort and like she cooks for you. She does all these amazing things, dude, that you're gonna love. So like, I'll share it with you. I'll share it with you, like no hard feelings. So they welcome Griff into their marriage. Do I think this is okay in real life? Absolutely not, absolutely not. But it works, it works. And Mora ends up falling for Griff while still being madly in love with her husband and things get spicy things get spicy. And the next book I'm going to recommend is One Teen Mr. K by Shannara Williams. Um, this is a series that is a emotional and like crazy and hot ride. Now we are following Candy and Quentin and Candy has always been like infatuated with her father's best friend, Quentin Kane. Now, big age gap, big age gap, but it's not until Candy is like 18 where she starts being a little more forward with how she views Quentin and her newly developed feelings for him. Um, Quentin has never really let himself look at her that way until she makes a like pass on him. And then he's like, huh, I kind of think I like what I see. I kind of think I like what I see, but obviously we can't go there because your dad's my best friend and you are 18 and it just can't work like this. So this, this is actually a series following their relationship and how, um, you know, Candy is a little tease and Quentin is also seeing someone else. So there is this like underdeveloped angst that's there that develops into something protective and possessive from Quentin. He gets so wrapped up in Candy that he literally loses sight on everything. And it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's one of the best things to me about a forbidden and taboo romance. Um, they should not be together. They should not be sneaking around, but they do. And it's hot. 
it's hot and it's fun and there's so much that goes on in this book too like plot wise to keep you interested i mean that you don't see coming as well so i would recommend this hands down one of my favorites by shanora williams um you have to read it i think i've said that on every single book but you should read it and then we have misbehave by charlie rose in this book we're following remy and mr james and i say mr james because this is a teacher student romance um, Remy is a senior in high school and she is very much trying to graduate, to move on to college, to have like something better for herself. She has been left living with her overbearing stepbrother who has gotten a little too handsy and a little too comfortable and um, has started making her feel uncomfortable. So she just wants a way out, but she develops this relationship, which really kind of starts as like a friendship between her and Mr. James. And obviously that's not okay, but that's the best part. Um, they should not have these feelings towards each other. And Mr. James fights it. He fights it. But eventually like protectiveness and possessiveness over Remy wins. They have this on and off forbidden romance together. And this is following them. And Remy is a little like flirt and a little tease. And she's like, as much as Mr. James tries to resist her, she's like, honey, stand back and watch me work watch me show you what you're missing and he just can't he can't resist her he tries he really tries the poor man tries but this book is so fun such a spicy time especially if you love teacher student romances um you should definitely read it and then the last book i'm going to recommend is voyeur by fiona cole and this book we're following oakland and callum and callum is a professor at a local college and he has really been like running from his past and struggling on like processing you know previous trauma that he's gone through and he doesn't like to be touched he doesn't like to be touched so he frequents a um club a spicy club he very much is a voyeur okay he likes to watch he likes to watch he likes to go in and see the live action but not participate and then we have oakland and Oakland is trying to make extra money and she is one of the performers in the spicy club. Callum by chance ends up seeing her and he kind of becomes fixated with her. Like before he knows anything else about her, he's requesting her, he's preferring to see her in the rooms. And then not long after he goes into his class to teach and there is Oakland in one of his chairs as his student. So um, I do think like it's a little different when they're in college compared to high school. Um, you know, the college type of thing, they are an adult, they can make those choices, but there is that, you know, rule thing that they're breaking of like the teacher student confidentiality, all of that. So, and obviously like he's watching her on the weekends and she has no idea. So there's a lot of things that are not revealed in the beginning between them and a lot of reasons why they should not be together, but they can't stay away. And Callum is like, I want what's best for her. I want the best life for her, but I also don't want that life for her, but I want that life for her with me if that makes any sense. This entire series is incredible. This entire series is spicy. So if you're looking for something like that, um, definitely check out this series. It's incredible, but I would definitely start with Boyer. This is the first one in it, and this is my personal favorite. All right, so those are all of the spicy romances I have to share with you. I hope you love these. Most of these have a really great plot along with a good spice level that I think will be very enjoyable, but also like give you that sizzling type of steam that you need. Drop in the comments and tell me your favorite spicy romance and leave me a fire emoji. And um, I will check out those books for myself. Thank you guys so much for watching and just being so supportive of my channel. I really, really appreciate it. It means more than you could ever know. Um, but as always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.